Hey people, uh, if you can't tell by looking at me and my bloodshot eyes and my messy hair and my ridiculous expression on my face, I'm kind of tired and I will tell you why. The reason I'm tired is because I have been working on a video for my channel, so let's see, I was up till 5 a.m. last night. Okay, I guess around 4 a.m. I was probably up till 4 a.m. last night working on it, which is way too late to be working on a video, but I had to get all of the main principal photography done on it, and I don't know what principal photography is, but it's a fancy word, and it sounds like it means the uh, main video shots of it, so I'm gonna stick with that word and use it. I finished the principal photography last night. <laughs> And a lot of you people have been asking me how do I make the music for like the songs and stuff that I do. And I am going to show you my actual project file. I make my music in a program called Cubase Studio 5. It's a program by Steinberg. And uh, they actually use this program in professional studios all the time. And I, I've been using Cubase since I was in radio years ago. I used to make radio commercials with Cubase. Then I learned how to make music using this keyboard here. See, that's my keyboard. And the way I do it is I just punch in the keys for notes, because I can't read music. I don't even know how to read music. I don't know how to do musical notes or anything. I just punch in the keys for what sounds good and make music that way. Now this is the project file for the song that I'm working on right now. You have, see the vocals right here. These are different vocals here. Then you have the, um, let's see, the synths are all here. And the cool thing about this is that the way I make music, see, because I can't read music. I, on it, I can't read any music. I don't know how to read musical notes. I don't know how to play piano or any instruments. But I play by ear. So I know how to make something sound like I know what I'm doing when in actuality I have no clue what I'm doing and my skills are very limited to um, C major scale and I usually have to make the songs in C major and then transpose them up and down to where they sound good. So I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just making music. But for example, the way I do this is I have, these are notes over here. And as you can see, these notes have a little keyboard over here. Well, this keyboard here is plugged into my keyboard over here where I press notes here and, well, hello. Oh, it's not plugged in, that's why I failed! But anyway, if that was working and I was pressing the C note, it would go like... See? And that's one synth, and then I can have, like, for example, this synth. And what that happens, for example, like, if I wanted to do just this instrument here, I would be punching them in on the keyboard, and, and then it comes out like this. And that's one note, and then I have like this synth here, and it goes. See, and that's how you do it. And then you put all of those together, and these are all the synths together, a bunch of different ones. This one. See, and you have these here, see, punching it. See? And then I have, of course, I have my, my piano here. Dun, 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 dun. Now another part whenever I make these songs is I have to have drums inside of it. So this is my drum track here. And the way I do drums is since I don't have an actual drummer here, I do pretty much the same thing that I do with the keyboard, except I have actual drum sounds. Like for example, this sound here is a closed hi-hat. And so a closed hi-hat sounds like this. Hear that? And then I also have like the kick, which is this. Bump, bump. And then I have like, for example, the ride. And so whenever I put all these drums and stuff together, it sounds like this. See? And it's a drum loop. You put all that together, you put the synths and the drums and the instruments, and it sounds like this. I think that's pretty cool how someone like me who has absolutely no musical talent, cannot read music, can't do anything to do with music at all, can actually pretty much produce a somewhat fakeish type of song, but I could still make music. Now as for the vocals, as everyone knows, I have zero vocal talent. I use what is called auto-tune. Auto-tune is where I can record this sound here. This is me with my voice singing in monotone and then I can control it with my piano keys. So if I want it to be this note when I'm singing like down here, I can bring the sound of my voice up. For example, let me show you. Where's auto-tune? 
For example, listen to this. Cause Valentine's Day is stupid when you're single. And if I was to put all those together with the instruments and the drums and the vocals and everything, it sounds like this. I look at what's all so special about this holiday. Cause Valentine's Day is stupid when you're single. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes of making the Valentine's Day music video. And making music videos are kind of difficult, which is what I was showing you over here. I have all this lighting set up because I'm going to be doing all these green screen effects where I can change the background of it. And I'm going to be doing, uh, as you can see, the uh, shreds of the Valentine's Day card on the floor. And this here is my good camera. It's, I guess you call it my art camera. It's the Canon T1i. I just got it. Now this is my video editing software. I use Sony Vegas Pro 9, and as you can see, there are a lot of tracks on here. Whoa, that's a... Do, 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 look at all these tracks. M most of these tracks are animation or different shots, like for example here, you can see this is one shot here, and then you have this shot over here, and then you have... Like, see, for example, there's so many different shots in this one thing here, because you have me, which is the animation right here in the front. Let me show you guys with the better quality. Me going... I don't know what I'm doing. There's a lot of different shots just in this one little scene here. You have me right here, but right, this stuff in the background, because watch, whenever I move, the background stays the same, and I don't really have a heart's background like that. But the way that's made is because I used my green screen over there, and I stood in front of it, and the green here, the computer cuts the green out and makes it where I can stand in front of a custom background. Now watch. Not only is this background, watch, see how it moves? It changes because the hearts appear and then fade out as you go along the different frames, see? So it's like a moving background. And I'll show you, let's see, draft. My computer's not fast enough to watch it full quality, watch. Way up here at the top, I have a little vignette mask, see? You can turn that off. And you can turn this off, which is like the the uh, grunginess of it. See, it grunges it up. See how that works? And that's how I do these different things. Whenever you make a complicated video like this, you can have almost a hundred different levels or different layers. They call them tracks, I guess. If I was professional, I would call them tracks. And this gets even more complicated whenever you have things like animation. Like, watch. I'm doing frame by frame now. See? See, watch. I throw the paper, and you get the animation here. See? Every single cloud in this video, I have to animate. These, these are the cloud layers. This is the layer for the thought bubble, those four there. And all of these layers here are clouds. For example, like, see that cloud up at the top? If I was to mute that cloud, that one disappears. And I had to animate every bit of motion, whenever it moves up, the lightning, the different clouds. See, this cloud right here is actually four layers because I not only have this main cloud, but if you see as it comes up, dun, 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 I also have these different bubbles here which if you watch closely in the video, they actually spin and turn, and this, the, uh, the main cloud here, it bumps with the beat. It goes bump, 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 and you'll see that inside of the actual video. So yeah, me staying up till three or four in the morning, this is exactly why, because not only do I have to do the animation and the videoing and the lighting and the sound and the mastering and the producing and, the an and every step of the video, also, before I even did this, I had to produce the song and make the vocals and write the lyrics and do the beat and the drums and every single instrument. But the cool thing about this is that whenever I put this video up, I can actually say that it was entirely made by me. There is not a single piece of this video, from the song to the vocals to the lighting to the effects to the animation, that was not made by yours truly. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the uh, little bit of behind the scenes that I can give you from these videos, and I'm going to play you guys a short preview of the Valentine's Day music video. It might actually be out by the time you see this, but for those of you who are seeing this vlog before the Valentine's Day video comes out, here is a preview clip from the actual video. Where to be found? Take Valentine's out of Valentine's Day and you're left with an ordinary single type of day. The type of day where you're sitting on the couch with no cheer and telling yourself, hey, better luck next year. This holiday comes once a year and I'm single again. A lot of people are inevitably going to ask me, why on earth, Caleb, are you wasting your time making this ridiculous Valentine's Day music video that's just going to go on YouTube. And I, I think the reason why, I guess, my justification for it is just to see if I can do it. 
Like, I just want to see if I can, by myself, with no outside help or anything, completely produce a song, lyrics, the beat, the music, everything of the song, as well as an entire music video, production, promotion, and everything, all by myself, within the space of one week. So yeah, I guess the reason I'm doing this is just to see if I can. Now, I just got this box in the mail from someone. I was just checking my P.O. box, and it's full of Valentine's Day stuff. And I actually think I can use this in some of the last shots that I need to do of the video. Look at all these bears and picture frames and stuffed animals and Valentine's Day cards. So thank you, Julie, for sending me all of this awesome Valentine's Day stuff just in time for it to make it into the video. Look at this mess. The things I do to entertain you.